Hi there. What I'm looking at today is the Lego RCX brick. Bought a couple of these for a couple of pounds each because they weren't working. Said the battery contacts were corroded and so I took a punt on them. Don't know what I'd do with them if they actually worked. But anyway, I thought I'd try and see what I could find out. First thing then you've got to do with one of these is to get it apart. They're quite an interesting design. What we have is the sort of top piece here. And this then fastens on to the top of the circuit board. It fastens on to the circuit board by clips. So what we have are these clips here. This is the motor output and it just clips on to these two clips. Have we got a little pointer? should think before I start, shouldn't I? Anyway, so that then clips on to two little clips uh, which are where, if we can see it, where are they there? Is that one? No, that's one. That's a capacitor. And the other one's over here. So that's going to clip onto those when the top's put on. So getting the top off is quite a difficult procedure. The reason being that this circuit board is either got this clip here clipped over onto the circuit board for the negative connection and on this one over here bends over onto this connector for the positive. I actually was quite surprised when I got these two circuit boards to see how different they actually are. One of them was soldered onto its battery box and the other one the clips were just bent over. Whether somebody soldered it or whether it was originally done that way I don't know. But when I got the apart I was really surprised to find that the circuits were quite different, quite considerably different. I've removed all the components from this part up here in an attempt to see if I could get it working but it still gives the buzz of death when connected to a voltage. When we look at the backs of them then we can see that there is quite a difference. This one is from 1999 and this one from 2002. We can see that the three chips here have all gone. They're no longer there and what they've done is to replace them with two chips on this side. These then are the motor driver chips. So they've moved on considerably with their motor driver chips. We'll notice here that there is uh, a diode there but nothing connected with these so I assume these have actually got them diodes built into them which are separate on these chips. The processes seem to be exactly the same. Uh, so we have our processors here which somebody says is an H8. Uh, it's actually labelled as Lego. So uh, what exactly it is I'm not too sure. Next to the processor then we have the RAM here. And this RAM is RAM. If you remove the power from it, it loses all its programs. So there's a certain amount of ROM, I assume, in here, which has a program in. But as soon as you program this and put it into this RAM, then the battery is holding it there. And if the battery is removed for longer than the capacitor can sort of supply a current to it, then it loses all its data. In the old days what we'd have done is just unsolder this positive pin, lift it up and put a battery, a diode to it and then a battery across the positive negative to hold the power into it. But this is what, 1998-99 and so this was sort of the best they could come up with. At the side of the processor here we have a crystal 
and here we have a couple of TTL chips I think they're TTL uh, or HC I think they're labelled so this one is an HC10 and this one is if we can see it a 37 something or other type of chip HC not TTL because they're CMOS I believe TTL are back in the good old days what else can we see on this circuit board well of course we've got the infrared 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 transmitters and infrared receiver when I looked at the board then sometimes I could get this to work and sometimes I couldn't to get it to work then what happens is the pad is supposed to come down onto here which switches on a wire to the processor which presumably gets an interrupt and should switch it on but it doesn't seem to work what I did manage to do on this one was to blow the fuse it has or should have had or had a fuse on it like here and this fuse then uh, blew so I replaced it with a good old fashioned glass fuse didn't seem to make much difference when we look at it then the power comes in at the top here and at the bottom here with these connections from the battery box interestingly it has these great big thick lumps of steel going across so that they can have all the cells in the same way round so that this positive 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 and negative 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 it also has these little bits of plastic in here which confuse me to start with and these go in to keep the circuit presumably to keep the circuit board away from those strips across the bottom to get it to start then we have these pads here 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 and here and this is the on off one we can see it's a classic sort of finger job so that the button which will have a little bit of carbon or something on the bottom of it when pressed across connects it together and sends a signal out the original one though that's slightly different can't quite understand this uh, it looks like it's covered in carbon anyway but that must be some sort of coating that they've got rid of uh, they've also on this you can't see it because of the fuse not used a three pin sort of voltage regulator like they've done on this one so they've got a three pin voltage regulator here with a capacitor across it that would give us out 5 volts when testing this it does give out the 5 volts and the 5 volts does get to these two chips on the back the inputs are interesting I've taken all the components off because I wanted to try and work the circuit out but when I came to try and work it out I found a problem here for example we have three test pins for the three wire uh, legs of the infrared detector so we could just plug onto there and see what the infrared detector is detecting but if we look at those on this side can't see any connections and if we look on the other side can't see any connections so how can they be test pins if there's no connections the answer it seems to me is this is what's called a multi-layer board it has copper on the front copper on the back and somehow they put copper in the middle so that what we find is some of the vias some of the ways where they are connected seem to go to nowhere they don't seem to have a connection on this side and I assume that's because they're connected on the inside uh, layers of this PCB so chances of actually trying to hack it or work out how it works I think I've got to give up on 
when I opened it up, I found that many of the, all the solder, well, most of the solder contacts were actually corroded as well, or at least covered in a film, and many of the veers were very dirty, as if the chemicals from the battery had attacked them. So it could well be that some of these veers don't actually go through anymore or get to the middle because of the corrosion from the batteries. It's quite understandable that people would leave batteries in these since they only have this RAM here which is going to lose the operating system and any programs once the batteries are taken out for more than about 20 seconds. The connectors on these I found quite fascinating. Uh, the idea being that they can be plugged onto either way round. So it doesn't matter which way you plug this on, that way or that way, because of the alignment of the connectors, then it means it can go either way and still work. The fact it's only got two wires is fascinating because how can you operate a light sensitive switch, this is just a push switch, but a light sensitive switch without power. Well the way this works is it actually sends power out on the wires to a full wave rectifier which then charges up a capacitor and the capacitor then supplies the power to the device. This of course is going very quickly. So then it sends power out and then reads what comes back from the light sensor and then switches the power on again. So it's constantly sending power out and receiving signals through the same two wires. Something LEGO never did again. They always seem to have a lot more wires on. These of course aren't original wires on the LEGO because they were very poor and uh, the insulation broke away so I've just soldered a couple of new wires onto them. So where are we then? Well yeah we've got this what I wanted to show was how these clip on so it has these two pieces coming down and that just clips on. So when we take the thing apart we've got to be very careful because the board is soldered or it's bent over under those contacts there, here and here and if we just try and pull the top off then what we find is it will break these contacts away. We can see that this one's broken already. So where are we? Well we've got to get it apart. The way pe most people suggest is there's four screws from the battery box. Take those out, lift up this uh, infrared sort of screen and then try to lever the top away or it's the way I suggest it, lever it away because the only thing that's holding it is these very strong springs. So if we can get those away without removing the board from the battery box then we've done a good job. If not we'll break the terminals off somewhere or other causing us problems when we try to put it back together. So is that more or less it? That's I think is everything although when we look at this one it doesn't look to have a pizza sounder on it whereas this one of course has its pizza sounder down here and the reason we can't see it on this board is it's tucked away along with the LCD driver chip underneath the LCD and that's where that happens to be. Another interesting thing is on the old one they used a surface mounted chip or transistor here to drive the LEDs whereas on the newer board they actually went for a through hole. Uh, where are we? A through hole transistor up there so that was a through hole uh, coming through this side, very difficult to get out, very badly corroded. We can see there there's a corroded veer uh, which could be not going all the way through because it's got corrosion on the inside. 
So yeah, it seems like it was a, a good idea to buy these, a couple of quid each, uh, with a punt to see if I could actually get them to do something. But I haven't got very far with it. Uh, so, well, I've got quite a long way, I think, but I haven't actually found the circuit that I was looking for at this end. Some people have diagrams on the internet but I find it difficult to see what's actually going on. So yeah, been an interesting time. Very upsetting to find in a way that they were different PCB designs that I thought when I got two, a couple of quid each, that they would be the same and I might be able to bodge one out of two. But the amount of corrosion on them is just too much, I think. And therefore, uh, it's a bin for them. Just get rid of them. Seems a pity, but can't see what else to do. So, that's my Lego RCX bricks. Which don't work. Too much battery corrosion. So it's bye now. Bye.